Good morning, everybody. This is the first of our daily video devotionals, and uh, I get the joy of being the one to be able to kick off those devotionals. Right now, I'm standing on the deck of our home, and in many ways, it seems like a, a normal day. Uh, the sun's shining, uh, the birds are out singing, and, and in just a moment, you may hear our our neighbor's dogs barking as they run around in the backyard. In so many ways, it seems like a, a normal day, but it's really not a normal day, not for the world, not for our nation, and not even for our church. As most of you know by now, as a result of the recommendations of the White House and, and of the uh, CDC and the World Health Organization and even our own governor's office, uh, we've decided that our worship services that we need to just live stream those and and we've asked all of our staff members to work remotely from their homes so as i say it's it's not a normal day in in any sense and one of the things that i miss greatly is i miss being at the church i miss the interaction that i have with the other staff members i i miss having many of you come by the church and and visit with us and and i miss being able to go to the hospitals when one of our members is going through a challenging time. I, I miss those occasions when some of you or, or, or other members of the staff and we go out and, and grab a bite of lunch uh, together. Of course, that's nothing compared to what others are facing. Up to now, for me, all of this has been little more than an inconvenience, but for many, this has been a real challenge. We've all seen the the stock market take a deep fall and that's affected the financial situations of many within our church others have seen changes in the marketplace and that's had a direct impact on each of them but that's only just the start there are those who have been infected with uh, COVID-19 and and that's forcing them to face life and death challenges. And, and then there are those families who even in this moment are feeling uh, the sting of the loss of a loved one and they're grieving as a result of that. Yesterday during my devotional time, I was thinking about all of this and I ran across a passage that I haven't been able to get out of my mind since I read it. It comes from the very first chapter of James, starting at verse 2. James, you may recall, scholars tell us that in all likelihood, he was the brother of Jesus. He was the little brother of Jesus, and there's a good chance that he saw Jesus while he was still a child. He watched him as he grew up. He, he watched him as he became a young adult. And, and he watched him all the way until he entered the ministry when he actually became a follower of his. So he knew as much about Jesus as anyone in the first century. But this is what he wrote, writing to the early Christians. He said, my brothers and sisters, think of the various tests you encounter as occasions for joy. Now that's sort of a strange thing to say, isn't it? Does James mean that whenever bad things happen to us, we're supposed to be happy about it? Does that mean that when we face an illness or someone we love faces a very serious surgery that we're supposed to rejoice in that? Does he mean that we're supposed to view the coronavirus as something like a trip to Disney World? Of course not. James is simply inviting us to reflect on how bad things that cap can happen to us can become occasions that make us better people than we already are. This is what he meant when he goes on and in the next verses to say, after all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature complete and lacking in nothing. I remember when I read that passage yesterday, my mind drifted back across the years to a church that I served early in my ministry. I remember when Carol and I first went to that church. Well, we were still in our 
uh, late 20s, early 30s, and and when we got to that church, the very first day that we were at that church, I had three people, literally three people, tell me that I was not wanted. And I remember thinking, how can you not want me? Uh, you don't even know me yet. But our two years there at that church uh, felt like a lifetime. And, and they nearly made me leave the ministry. But you know, today, when I look back on that experience, and I, I think about those two years at that place, I can tell you that uh, the things I learned while I was at that church did more to shape my ministry and more to confirm my call to ministry than any experience that I've had since that time. That's part of what I think James is saying here. He's saying that the most challenging situations can give rise to the greatest development in our character and in our lives. So as we go through these next weeks and face the challenges of COVID-19, remember to use them as occasions to become bigger and better people uh, than we already are. And remember this, remember that if you have a need, those of us who are on the clergy and senior staff and other members of the staff, we're still here to serve you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.